So let me just break down for you what the main objectives of the Aditya L1 launch are. We'll come to the cost and how amazingly cost effective it is in just a moment. But these are basically the mission objectives. Number one, to study the sun's atmosphere and its interaction with solar wind. This is main objective number one. Remember that the spacecraft will be in a halo orbit at the Lagra Lagrange point one uh, which is one and a half billion kilometers from the earth number two to study the super high temperatures of the solar corona that's the outer layer of the sun the most visible part of the sun called the corona is going to be studied by the aditya l1 objective number three is going to be to study dynamics of the solar system remember there is a great deal that is not understood in terms of the relationship between the sun and very broadly speaking, all other parts of the solar system. There have been missions before Aditya L1, but this ISRO space probe will add to the knowledge that currently exists and open many avenues for research going forward as well on the star at the center of our solar system. Number four, to observe solar temperature non-uniformity. The difference in temperatures between the so-called surface of the sun, even though there is no solid surface, uh, and the corona is hugely vast, somewhere between 15 million degrees Celsius, 25 million degrees Celsius. Some parts are far less. What is with these huge ranges in temperatures on the sun? That's going to be studied by Aditya L1 as well. To observe solar temperature, uh, to evaluate the main drivers of space weather, the role that the sun plays uh, in uh, uh, you, know, we you know, weather patterns in space on other celestial bodies in the solar system. All of that is going to be looked at uh, you know, by, the, by, the, uh, by the Aditya L1 space probe. These are the four main objectives that we are looking at. All right, uh, so Shiv talking to us about the objectives of this very important mission, India's maiden mission uh, to the sun is what we're talking about. And it, when, when it comes to ISTRO and the scientists involved in several such missions, uh, it's, a, it's a ritual really, like Shiv said earlier, to see many of them visit temples. And Akshita is in fact joining us uh, from the temple that ISTRO scientists often frequent. Akshita, this Ritual is essential whenever it comes to important missions of this nature, isn't it? It's become very common. Good morning, Sneha. Good morning, Shiv. Uh, I'm actually outside the Satish Dhawan Space Center. Very fittingly, a very, very sunny day, considering it's all about the sun today. Uh, we're going to be going in in just a few moments from now. I can tell you that the area here completely jam-packed, which is why it took me a while to get here as well. There's a viewing gallery where the public is allowed, so they're going to be gathering there in large numbers. About 10,000 people, we're being told, will be gathering here, getting a chance to view the launch of Aditya L1 up close and personal. Meters away from me is my viewing gallery. I'll be going in because I've got my passes as well and I'm going to be watching it live and getting you details. 11.20 is when the countdown will begin by ISRO. Of course, the official countdown to the launch started yesterday about 12.20 in the afternoon, but today at 11.20 we'll witness the countdown as it happens. It's a textbook launch and launches is ISRO's area of expertise. So everything expected to go absolutely perfectly and as they expected, it's a beautiful sunny day with uh, no uh, you know clouds or any sort of gloomy sense here in Sri Harikota. Uh, the entire area there's high security all around here and I can tell you uh, right now Sneha and Shiv the mood is upbeat everyone's really excited with Chandrayaan 3 when I was there it was a landing time so things were a little different in the sense there was the sense of uh, you know of nervousness a thread of tension in the air this time around it's a lot more different you know, there's a lot of excitement, there's a lot of talk uh, of the sun, as Shiv just pointed out, all the objectives of the mission as well. It'll take four months for us to get there. So it's going to be a long wait, and I'm very sure, at least for me, a very, very impatient wait, but we'll get there. And that's going to be the great part, that we'll join a very elite space league once again. After the moon, the sun, which only the US, Japan, uh, and uh, ESA, which is the European Space Agency, have done so far. So a lot of excitement in the air, Sneha, uh, and we're going to be going in in just a bit, having a chat with the ISRO chief, uh, Dr. Somnath, Union Minister Jitendra Singh is also here, as is the entire ISRO team that is currently behind Aditya L1. 
All right. You know, Akshita, what's important here is that, and we've been talking about this, that even with this mission, just like Chandrayaan 3, India is again going to be joining the prestigious big boys club. Not too many countries have been able to successfully send, you know, missions to the sun, isn't it? It's extremely difficult. It's extremely challenging. It's very different from sending a mission to the moon, Akshita. Imagine this, uh, uh, Sneha, 1.5 million kilometers. That's how much really uh, Aditya L1 will have to travel to get to the sun. Obviously, we're not going to be very close to the sun. If this is the earth, this is the sun. Uh, and I'm just going to show this to you here. The earth, the sun. You're going to be seeing Aditya L1 somewhere here, closer to the earth. And despite that, 1.5 million kilometers. It's unfathomable, really, that for the next four months, Aditya L1 is going to be traveling all around. And essentially, you also see that distance because uh, he's following an orbit, right? He'll be going around uh, the Earth and then essentially in a slingshot move, which is ISRO's uh, always go-to move, essentially. They did it with uh, Chandrayaan, they did it with Mangalyaan, and that's how they got to Mars as well. In this case, again, they're going to use that slingshot move to get to that imaginary point of Lagrange 1. Once there, I know everyone seems to think that the satellite will be static, constantly watching the core of the sun. Not the case. Nothing in space can ever be static. It's always moving, which is why even Aditya L1, if this is the Lagrange point one, will keep going around in what's being referred to as a halo orbit, which you can so very well picture in your head. Doing that orbit, uh, you know, he's going to be getting... Uh, a, low, a whole lot of data, and this is courtesy, seven payloads that are on board Aditya L1, four of them that will focus on the light from the sun, three of them which will conduct on-site experiments as well. But what particularly excites me, Sneha and Shiv, is perhaps what could emerge from uh, what they refer to as SME, solar emissions, solar flares. Uh, it's something that's had huge impacts, huge repercussions on all of us. Not everyone has been able to understand the impact or how powerful it is. And hopefully with the Aditya L1 out out there conducting experiments, not just India, but the entire world will benefit from it. You know, as far as these solar missions are concerned, there's a reason every space organization is talking about it. You refer to it really uh, as being an elite space league, Sneha. US, Japan, uh, and ESA, the European Space Agency, they've done it. But as far as China's concerned, they're working on it. And at this point, India, we, of course, have beaten them. But having said that, a lot more other countries are doing it because your essential uh, birth of the solar system uh, or even the eventual death of the solar system, all of that can be studied. And the answers to all of that lies in this beautiful ball of fire, which is why it's so important to really research. And you can never know enough about the sun. There are still so many unanswered questions uh, about about the sun, about the kind of power, the kind of magnetic field it has, the kind of uh, you know, emissions that it puts out, that this kind of a study is so crucial globally as well, which is why you'll see all the top astrophysicists, all the top astronomers right now keeping their eyes firmly glued on this center, the Satish Dhawan Space Center here in Sriharikota.